You know how editing is one of the most important things when it comes to creating videos? Uh, some people would say that shooting the actual video might be the most important thing, but you can actually create videos from just using stock footage yesterday. So I, I dare to say that editing is just a wee bit more important than shooting the actual video. And I thought, why not show you a couple of things that I use to streamline my Final Cut Pro workflow so that I can edit my videos faster. When I'm editing a vlog for my vlog channel, I am down to doing like an eight minute video in approximately an hour. So this is gonna be a good one. The first thing that I want to talk about, numero uno, is going to be <laughs> the key binds or the commands that you can set up within Final Cut Pro so that you can just streamline everything on your keyboard. This is something that I did like years after using Final Cut Pro. And it was first when I was talking to my friend Edwin that he said, like, why, why haven't you set up your keys to actually work as short commands for what you're doing because I was like clicking the blade tool cutting marking deleting and then did that all over <laughs> and over again so now I've kind of binded everything so when I hit W it removes everything from where the playhead is and backwards and then when I hit E it removes everything from where the playhead is and forwards. And when you have it set up like this, I get too excited, you know, when I'm talking about stuff. And when you have it set up like this, you're gonna be able to really, really nail down your edits. And when you're doing one of these talking head videos, you're gonna be able to edit the talking head in somewhere about like 30 or 40 minutes, and then you can focus all your other efforts on shooting the B-roll or adding in titles and callouts and that kind of stuff. Which brings us in to plugins that can help you streamline your workflow and make your videos look better and make your videos feel more engaging and not as stale as if you wouldn't have to have any callouts or backgrounds or counters or anything like that. I am a huge fan of the plugins that Motion VFX has and I think that even though they are expensive, it is a lot of value for the money that you pay. Being able to pay a one-time fee and use your plugins for a bunch of different videos, maybe client videos, YouTube videos, Instagram, you name it, I've used them for everything. And I still think that their plugins are some of the best ones that you can get for Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna drop a link down below to my favorite ones so you can check them out, depending on if you want them or not, but I highly recommend them. And talking about boring talking headshots, one of the things that is super easy to do, but also something that a lot of people overlook in the beginning of their editing career is using keyframes. Keyframes is one of those things that you just have to learn because the more you know about keyframes, the more animations you can do to your clips. Say for example that you have a drone clip. One of the things that you can do to that drone clip is that you can zoom in a little bit and then move the drone clip up or down and then when you're satisfied you set a keyframe and then move the playhead forward to the end of the clip and then move the clip in the opposite direction and by doing so you have created a keyframe between the two positions of the clip and that gives you this fake camera movement of the camera like panning up towards the shot you can start combining this with scale, you can move it to the right or left, you can combine this with different effects if you want. One of the effects that I personally use a whole lot for my videos is the handheld effect. When you wanna do like a transition where you have hard cut and you want to mask it a little bit more and make it feel more immersive, then you can just keyframe the handheld effect at the end of the clip and then at the beginning of the next clip so that it feels like it shakes the camera a little bit but you can't see the actual cut because the camera is shaking. So it's a great way to use keyframing in your videos to make them more alive, if you may. And talking about built-in effects in Final Cut Pro, one of the things that I've been playing around with a whole lot lately is using the Gaussian Blur. One way that you can use this is when you have, say for example, your Instagram account, you want to roll that as a screen recording, but then it's gonna be in this vertical position. What you can do is you can duplicate the clip and then scale that up and then add a blur 
onto the bottom clip and then it's going to look like you have a blurred up background and it makes the video a little bit more engaging. Another thing that I recently did with the built-in blur effects is when me and Teppo rented a suite down at the hotel by the lake, I wanted to have like a room tour where it was like moving fast between the different places that I want to show off and in between that like when I was doing speed ramps I wanted to have a blurry feeling so that it shifted focus and there is a built-in plugin in Final Cut Pro that is called zoom I think where you can set it to variable and then you can adjust where the spot is going to be focused on so when you're doing a speed ramp you can keyframe both the amount of blur and also where the center is going to be to make it feel more natural when you're doing your speed ramps moving forward. It's a great way to utilize the power of Final Cut Pro. And the last thing that I want to talk about is also a really important thing, especially if you're doing a lot of color grading or if you want to do a lot of green screen and that kind of stuff, and that is masking. Because when you're using masking, you can play around with different things when you're making your videos. For example, when I did the um, time stopping video that I did, throwing the paper of my shoulder, then to be able to do that, I moved to this side of the frame and then we had masked out like right here so that we played that back in 240 FPS and then this in 4K 25. And when you're able to mask, you can blend things together, you can feather it, you can play around with this and not only can you use it for like blending two clips together, but you can also use it when you're doing a lot of color grading and you wanna make the sky a little bit darker, but you don't wanna darken the entire image because then you're gonna crush the shadows. So playing around with masks is something that I highly recommend and you can do this when you're doing color grading, you can do draw mask, you can do whatever. It's gonna be up to you on how you can implement this into your own creative ways. And those are a few things that I use on a daily basis to speed up my entire workflow when I'm working in Final Cut Pro. Really hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe i would love that and uh, if you want to see a little bit more behind the scenes of what is going on here or in my life then i do have a vlog channel you know link in the description don't forget to subscribe to that as well peter france william is saying goodbye i will see you in the next video